Welcome back, everybody. We are here live in Barcelona, Spain. This is HP Discover 2013 in, uh, in Europe. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined by my co-host Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org, and we're pleased to have here inside theCUBE, Craig Nunez, Vice President of Marketing of HP, uh, Converge Infrastructure Storage. Craig, welcome back, CUBE alumni. I mean, you're up there now uh, getting in, into the, uh, the annals of uh, a top echelon of CUBE guests. <laughs> I'm angling for hosts. I'm <laughs> angling for it. <laughs> so, welcome back. Thanks. Great, great to see you, thanks for all your support. You've been great supporter of theCUBE, uh, great guest, and uh, a lot of action happening here, but let, let's first talk about the most important thing that we were talking before we went on live, was yes. the Stanford Cardinal now, bowl Stanford bid. Stanford Cardinal, back-to-back -back Rose Bowl since most of our viewers before they were born, in <laughs> fact. Of uh, course, HP headquartered in Palo Alto, the home of Stanford. Uh, again, Pac-12 champions, yeah. beat ASU, Exciting Michigan State, Rose Exciting game, yes. Yeah, it wasn't looking too good a few weeks before the end of the season, but... Uh, so what well, it was looking great, and then they, they fumbled the ball, and then lucked out, backed in, right? That they, uh, and, and... So who are they playing in the Rose Bowl? They're playing Michigan State. Okay, what's who, the, uh, do, do we know what the line is on that game yet? Big upset, or? big upset in that Michigan State game. So, uh, so Michigan, Michigan State's State, favored, um, is that right well, or no? Good question. Uh, I think Stanford's ranked above Michigan yeah, State. Yeah, so they would be, so, uh, so Stanford oh, will be favored. Actually, I think they're four and five. So. Okay, so that's good. Uh, so I got to yeah. ask you, what do you think Stanford's, why is Stanford so successful? What is your take on Stanford? My take on Stanford is uh, work ethic, great defense, and uh, uh, probably the, uh, the uh, I think the, the reason they have won so consistently is they have an offense that just pounds away. A lot like HP storage. <laughs> power football, power storage. Yes, uh, indeed. <laughs> I mean, blocking and tackling is what it's all about. I mean, Stanford does it old school, right? Old school football and, and storage is uh, your, your world right now. Absolutely. Um, you guys are playing some power football storage. Give us power the, storage. I'll see, and I'll see, you know, the bowl of eligibility for you guys is significant because Meg Whitman's recent earnings call, again, highlights 3PAR um, as a success in the HP results. So, you know, give us some color behind some Sure, of that. yeah, let me tell you. It's like you. a Pete Sampras serve 3PAR. <laughs> I mean, it just keeps going. So, the, uh, um, first of all, we've talked in the past about how 3PAR has gone. It's been a tremendous success with our customers. The, um, uh, the growth, particularly since the introduction of the tier one mid-range, the 3PAR store serve 7000 last December, just a year ago. Since that introduction, uh, according to IDC's most recent numbers, we have grown 68% uh, HP in the mid-range. 6.9 points of market share, um, and guess who's down in that year, right? Our friends at EMC, <laughs> big time. Who? I never heard of them. <laughs> okay, so wait, so you're taking sh you're taking share from the EMC mid range, absolutely in the uh, uh, the VNX. mid range fiber channel space. HP has grown, while EMC has. Right. Well, this is one of the reasons why HP bought 3PAR, right? Is because you had an architecture that could go from high to, to low, and you. I mean, you were participating in that sort of tier one, yeah, yeah. we call it tier 1.5, I know you don't like that term, but, but then the mid-range announcements tier one, Dave. really brought, brought, well, but, but the, but the mid-range announcements, you're bringing tier one down to the mid-range. Tier mid -range, one down right? to the mid-range, uh, mid-range affordability. Which was, right. which was always kind of Phil Soren's vision at Compellent, yeah, but, but yeah. you have a little different flavor. Well, it's tough, so let me tell you, and if you, uh, I think you've talked to Ashok Singhal in the sure. past, our CTO, yeah. Ashok's, View is, um, you know, the the uh, high-end clustered architecture uh, is, you know, a it's an easier thing to do um, to to leverage that 
architectural capability down into the mid-range, then start with a dual controller and try to make it grow, right? It's, uh, uh, it's there's a, enough of a discontinuity there that it's, you know, it's tough for an architecture like, like Compellent. It's a, it's a nice architecture where it plays, but, uh, but you know, the, in a world of growing flash, like our uh, uh, announcement in June, in a world with growing flash adoption, you need that clustered architecture more than a couple of controllers to throw at the Now, would you make loads. the same argument with EMC VNX? I mean, essentially a dual uh, controller architecture. Absolutely. But, but EMC yeah. would say, oh, I will go to the VMAX. Now, you guys would say we have the same architecture. Yeah, but. again, so if you look at VMAX, here's the, here's the issue. You need, you need very high IOP performance with very low latencies, number one. Number two, you've got to have very um, uh, tuned efficiency so that you're not consuming a ton of that expensive flash capacity and you've got to handle the, the wear leveling uh, issues. Um, the, those traditional architectures, pick VNX or VMAX, lots of folks have them out there today. Those were not built with those capabilities in mind and it's a, it's a struggle for them to achieve uh, those two capabilities. Thus, money down on Extreme IO for EMC. The problem with that is uh, Extreme IO doesn't bring with it all the- The stack. All the, the, the stack that people depend on for that most mission critical data they want to run on flat. Yeah, it's nice architecture, but it's got a ways to go in terms of the maturity. Long way. Now, the, back to the three-part growth. Where's it coming from? Is it coming from on HP platform? Or is it off platform, both? It is combination because um, uh, we have uh, a number of a accounts where we uh, are going in and you know we are net new uh, with our customers. Uh, first time on the floor, a lot of cases replacing EMC, but replacing HDS and IBM as well. Um, and, uh, and of course, we have uh, an, an EVA base uh, and we've purposefully developed this platform to be a very seamless move from EVA to 3PAR uh, so it's, you know, in, in their view, it's the logical next step. We have technology built in that actually makes that data move very seamless. So whether it's an EVA on base um, or um, uh, an EMC takeout, you know, we're going. Well, you're direction. in a much better position now for your, your on platform. And you, I mean, before you came back to HP, HP was giving up a lot of its storage business. and. And, and now, I mean, just gaining share in your own base has got to be a, 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 a big hit, and obviously it's easier to do that. So, uh, but, so talk a little bit more about the three-part news. Let's go through the news. Sure, so, yeah, yeah. So the so, all-flash stuff is really what's hot these days, yeah. right? Yeah, so there's, um, uh, I'm going to do it in, in a little different order, Great. if you don't mind, because I, I think a, a big, big headliner for our news yesterday that broke was uh, the new uh, next generation store once uh, uh, family. This is the first time we've rolled that family from low to high. So a big, big platform announcement. So top to bottom refresh. Top to bottom. So now we've got uh, brand new store once capabilities from, you know, built into our data protector backup software, built into our virtual storage appliance, our software defined storage appliance and all of our hardware appliances. And the, the, the real value with this refresh uh, has everything to do with reducing our customer's risk uh, when it comes to recovering data. We will recover their data, restore their data from the appliance faster than any system in its class. And in fact, uh, our 6500 at the top end will restore customer data 10 times faster than EMC's best, than the, than the DD990. So that kind of value is huge for C, CIOs, uh, VPs trying to reduce their risk. And um, if you think about you know, a, a, a significant outage, um, you know, most studies will show if I'm out for days, you know, a lot of companies are going to have a hard time recovering from that. So you've got to have in place a plan to, to uh, avoid those potential disasters, right? Yeah, and most recoveries are for relatively fresh data, so you obviously want to do that from, from disk. Exactly, you want it to be absolutely. super fast, because yeah. if it's fresh data, it's like, oh, I, I need that. Yeah, yeah. Right. 
Okay, so that's the the, the store once. Yeah. So some other stuff yeah. on store and once yeah, too, the right? Other, the other bit on store once is we um, we've introduced some uh, software-based encryption. So uh, security is uh, you know top on our customers' minds. We've got that in place. Data at rest encryption. We also have um, uh, <laughs> we also have. A new they said it couldn't be done. <laughs> they said it couldn't be done, but we did it anyway with Star One 6500. 6, we also have some um, uh, a, a new program called the Get Protected Guarantee. A new guarantee, Dave. You guys got a new guarantee with, with, a, with, a, with a product this. announcement? I yeah. think you predicted I'm this. <laughs> the uh, Get Protected Guarantee is awesome for customers because basically what it does is when when they move to Store Once we will guarantee a 95% capacity reduction from their fully hydrated backups to what we store on store once. And if we cannot do it, capacity's on us. We cover it. Okay, right? you're like the poster boy of these guarantees. Have you ever had to pay one of these off? Never, you, not no, once. Never. Like never. Go back to the even three par days. Ever, never. Okay, and customers test you on them, right? I mean, Absolutely. They, they obviously Part look, of, right? So here's, here's the deal, this is, um, Look, it's, uh, it's a great program, customers love it, but it's built on you know, real assessments that we do with our customers. Um, when we present a Get Protected Guarantee, we will actually do a backup assessment. We'll find failed backups our customers didn't even know they had going. We'll identify the different data types. We'll, we'll talk about data that's going to dedupe well and data that won't, and we're going to set very clear expectations. Um, and we do that upfront, no charge. It's just you know part of our part of our. Uh, and that's where you set the guarantee. Exactly. You, do you yeah. ever walk and say, "Well, we, we don't want to guarantee you." Look, if somebody <laughs> said, "Hey, we are 80% video and audio files," yeah, then yeah okay. it, it's not happening. Right. Um, right. But if you're if you're 15 or 20% video audio. Great, talk about it. some of the macro trends. I want to get in and tease out some of the trends around software-defined uh, storage. Because we've been, sure. you know, we've done some crowd chats with some other vendors around software-defined, you know, fill in the blank, and that's the rage right now. I yeah. mean, it's nice. SDN, HP's had, Bethany, you know, got to go back three years ago here at uh, Barcelona, which by the way, Dave, you know, Barcelona was our coming out party with theCUBE at HP. Remember uh, at the hotel we had- The Dave three, and John Cube. Yeah, <laughs> David Scott and, and, and Craig was on. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but since then, software-defined networking, we've had Bethany on, yeah. you guys were the first one shipping OpenFlow, AKA SDN back then, but now it's storage, right? So what does that mean? I see signs up there, software-defined storage. What, what yeah. does it mean? Define, yeah. define software-defined storage. Software-defined storage is storage software that runs on a uh, virtual machine. It is hypervisor independent, um, it is hardware agnostic. Um, it uh, is the full stack of software that runs inside maybe a, a, a storage controller. And it is scale out and federated so that you can really populate and take advantage of this across your server infrastructure. Um, we have been doing software-defined storage, uh, albeit by a different name, software-defined storage is kind of a new term for everyone, but we've been doing this since 2006, 2007 with Store Virtual, formerly Left Hand, and in fact, uh, November 12th, we actually you know, made this very real for our SMB customers. We bundle a free terabyte of Store Virtual VSA with every virtualization enabled ProLiant server. So if I'm a small, medium, small or medium sized business user thinking about virtualization, going to spin up some VMware maybe, part of the deal is need shared storage, right? Well with Store Virtual VSA free on your ProLiant, uh, shared storage is handled. Deploy your server, deploy your VMware license, you're up and running, no Hardware required. Dave, so, what's your take? So on that this? so that was a that was a pre-discover announcement, right? Yeah. Okay. So let's. I just want to tick through these the, the rest of the announcements just so sure. we have that. Yeah. Um, so we went, did so the store once, but we once. missed something on store once. You did something on, on Oracle, didn't you? Did, uh, yes. Man? Yeah. So we um, one of the cool things about store once technology. There's a um, uh, a, a software called uh, Catalyst, and Cat what Catalyst allows us to do 
is a couple of things. It allows us to offload the deduplication to media server and even application server. It also allows us to integrate into uh, uh, customers' applications. So we've integrated into backup applications, um, you know, net backup and backup exec and of course data protector. But um, what we did this last time was integrated uh, in directly into Oracle RMAN. So from Oracle Enterprise Manager, you back up straight to store once. You control the whole backup um, without having to uh, deal with a separate backup ISV or even deal with the store once element manager. We also did that with uh, Bridgehead software um, in the healthcare market, so a similar approach. So this is really important, because so RMAN is the predominant way in which Oracle databases get backed up by mm -hmm. Oracle DBAs. If you're not doing RMAN, then you're doing some hack that right. really is not the best practice. So RMAN's the best practice, but the Oracle D DBA doesn't like the Oracle backup admin, because the Oracle DBA's a control freak, and he or she wants to know everything that happens, and they can't get control of it. So basically you're allowing that to become a self-service Option. Exactly, yeah. So the exactly. DBA can actually choose the set of services that he wants to uh, deploy to back up the, the database. That's right. Take without advantage. having to yeah. go beg, borrow, steal from a the backup admin. Yeah, a different workflow. The, um, now the other bit of news we, we had was more in the data retention area, in, uh, uh, archive area with store all. Now, StoreAll is a platform we introduced about a year ago, and when we uh, introduced that, it's a very scalable platform. We talk about a hyperscale storage platform, um, and we uh, introduced that with an embedded NoSQL metadata query engine. So you can go in and search very fast, a, a very large uh, repository. And to put that kind of into context, um, a traditional file system scan of 500 million files or objects, 42 hours, okay? Uh, with express query, 1.4 seconds, right? So it is real time search of your repository. And what we introduced with StoreAll was, uh, first of all, an entire refresh of the platform, new uh, 8200 gateway and 8800 system. We introduced um, some new uh, uh, template-based reporting, so very simple reports based on Express Query. So it's ultra fast and ultra simple. And the, um, uh, we in integrated OpenStack, uh, Swift-based object store, and um, uh, the identity service right into the platform. So you've got this cloud portability developed maybe in the cloud, and then move that application to run on-premise for security or uh, you know whatever uh, motivation. And you refresh the, the hardware as well, right? Yeah. yeah, new hardware, so uh, that's the, now the store all 8200 and 8800 platforms. So Craig, okay. I got to talk to you about some of the, um, the innovations of storage. Yeah. So, so I want to get your take on an update on where we are relative to polymorphic where, simplicity. Where is this going, John? Okay. Huh? okay. Polymorphic, polymorphic simplicity. simplicity. Well, we, poly we got the man coming on right after Craig, snow. so we can. So we, I want to take David's thunder away, but <laughs> so how are we doing with polymorphic? Okay. One, is this still around? Are we guys still talking polymorphic, or did uh, we drop that? Absolutely. Or are we going to? Absolutely. <laughs> and and I tell you, by another by using different words, we're already seeing the copycats pile in, right? Keep your eyes peeled, because other vendors are trying to say, hey, I've got a platform that goes from low to high. Well, low to high of the mid-range doesn't count, right? A small dual controller to a big dual controller doesn't count. What, poly, what a polymorphic design gives you is low to high end, tier one capability, um, spinning media, to flash media, file, object, block, right? One platform, anywhere you deploy primary storage. Let's take a look at the alternative that customers have to slog through today. And I, I pick on my buddies at EMC. Um, most people are familiar with what they've got. You've got VMAX, VNX, VNX-E, Extreme IO, Recover Point, Bplex, okay, how many does it take, right? We think one. What about Centera? So, so 
let's but drop into information retention. Centera, Atmos, Isilon, or Store All, which in fact is built on the same architecture as Store One. So let's throw in Avamar and Data Domain. Five in information protection and retention. We've got one architecture with two different service offerings in Store Once and Store All. So the big, I mean, the big race is how do you get you know, how does how do they take and sort of simplify all that, which is you know not an easy thing to do, and and then how do you popularize and and bring forward your three platforms and and it's, it's does it all end with an object store that's it, sort yeah. of layered on top? Yeah, I think it is easier to innovate and move fast when you're doing that on one technology base than trying to do that on eleven and try to stitch them together. All right, good, we, got, we, got to, we got to hit the three-par stuff too. Hold on, three I, want to, on, yes. I, don't, I want to get one more question on Polymorphic. So, so to me, you know, interface. Is there one interface? What's the deal with, because you mentioned a lot of other events, EMC in particular, all those. The, the trend is towards single interface. Mm -hmm. What, you guys have a single interface into that we have, Idaho? Yeah, so in fact, we have a single interface today that, that is bigger than just storage. Uh, it's really storage, networking, and server. Um, uh, and, and you guys know Tom Joyce runs uh, our Converge System uh, uh, group. And Tom um, uh, has introduced uh, uh, Crossed EG HP OneView, and it is one management platform that manages a, a cross-converged infrastructure, right? And uh, the uh, work we're doing with Tom is really driving great storage value into that one management platform. Yeah, we got United Airlines coming on, we're going to talk about that, so we're already getting the hook, so I want to make yeah. sure United we get Airlines all the, is coming on? Yeah, coming on, talk about one view. So, um, three par. The three par, so the news on three all part. flash, so we, uh, new OS. Yeah, so we've in uh, uh, enhanced version of our all flash array, the 7450, we've introduced new software that has taken performance up 60% to nine 100,000 IOPS. Uh, we have introduced new hardware and software that's allowed us to take the cost of flash down about in half. So new MLC drives. Um, some software we call adaptive sparing that pools our spare and the MLC spare capacity for greater efficiency and gives, gives uh, capacity um, back to our customers without them necessarily having to dig deep in their wallet to uh, pay for that capacity. Um, the uh, um, other important announcement with 3PAR is some new quality of service software. So whether you're Flash or uh, a, a, a tiered storage platform, our quality of service software allows you to guarantee IOPS, bandwidth, now, latency control, with a maximum threshold and minimum thresholds that we will uh, uh, keep performance above. So the question everybody wants to know, right? EMC had to go out and buy a company. Uh, well, Cisco, of course, uh, bought a company. IBM bought Texas Memory Systems. Uh, is, is this a stopgap move, and does HP need to go out and buy somebody, or is this the platform for the future? That's this what everybody's is, asking. This, uh, so we've said uh, uh, for a uh, couple of years now, this is the platform of the future. This is the all-flash strategy, and the benefit of it is data services that work across the portfolio, and uh, I, I, I would say it's working, right? From last December, the 7,000 announcement, to the all flash array announcement in June, the 7,450, uh, we're up markedly uh, as a business. Customers are voting with their wallets, and, and they're voting on three part. Right. Craig, so, I want to just get your thoughts about the show itself. And now, let's take a step out of storage, talk about HP. Um, what's the vibe here? We share with the folks out there, you know, we, you know, you're a good presence, obviously, in Europe. Um, what's the dynamic here at HP Discover? What's your take? And share with the audience your perspective. Well, sure. Obviously, day one, we still got some stuff to drop. The shoes will drop with announcements. Yeah. Meg's keynotes at two o'clock here, Europe yeah. time. Yeah. What's your take? Share with the audience some of the things that you're feeling. And, and knowing the inside baseball, what's coming around the corner. Sure. What, 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 should, what, we, what, we, what will we expect to see? And just share your perspective. Yeah, so I think, um, uh, generally speaking, you're seeing a huge, um, uh, focus on innovation, right? We're, do, we're doing it in storage, it's all around us. 
uh, you walk up and down Discover, you're going to see uh, a big move in technology that customers want. Uh, you're going to see a pace that maybe you've not seen um, in, in a while from HP or, or our competition. Uh, there's a, uh, a real sense of urgency um, uh, back home in California where I work, uh, but you know, across every HP site in the company. And it's you know, from the top of the company uh, all the way down to our engineers and salespeople, everyone feels you know, that, that, uh, you know, that drive, that need to, uh, you know, to move fast and, and respond quicker to what our customers are the after. The smoke is cleared. I mean, the clear, the ship, the, the aircraft carrier is throwing off some serious wake. It's moving in the direction, so the financial results, yep. obviously pretty impressive. Hit the gas, Hit give the it gas. throttle. Yeah. <laughs> um, Gardner Conference is going on in the US, data center conference, that affects your, your world. Yep. You guys are doing some, getting some tweets already in there. Great. Um, so, you know, the data center is changing and the Absolutely. cloud is right here. Yeah, yeah, um, big so, transformation. So thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. Craig Nunez, obviously the success of 3PAR, um, continues to leave uh, its, its, its mark on the world within HP, certainly changed the direction of the infrastructure product portfolio. You're seeing the converged infrastructure game continue to accelerate. Uh, certainly there's been no stopping it from this point forward with the, with the migration of private cloud and hybrid cloud. Craig and the storage group, congratulations on all your success right. and continued innovation. We'll be watching the polymorphic evolution of the HP storage here inside theCUBE and continue the next three days. This is theCUBE, we're live for three days. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. <laughs>